Hello, Chemistry 20s. Our lesson tonight is going to be on formula manipulation. How do I move a formula around to solve for another variable? So I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. Hey, reminder that when I move a formula around, we are always following two basic rules. I want to move something to the other side to get a variable by itself. You always do the opposite math operation. So if we're multiplying in the equation to move it to the other side, you're going to divide. If we're dividing to move it to the other side, you're going to multiply. And then that also works for adding and subtracting. Um, the second thing we're going to do is whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to both sides of the equation. So let's take a look and do an, exa an example of this. So in the example of A equals BC, if we are trying to solve for B, I'm going to rewrite it, A equals BC, I'm solving for B, okay? Well, currently, we're multiplying B by C. So the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So whatever I do to one side, I'm going to do to the other. So because I'm currently multiplying by C, I'm going to divide both sides by C. So I'm going to divide the right-hand side by C. I'm going to divide the left-hand side by C. You'll notice now that we have C on top and on bottom. So that means it can cross out. Because if you've got the same thing on top and bottom, they of course cancel out like one over one or two over two. And so we're gonna be left with B all by itself, that was our goal, equals A over C. And I've just written it a different way here, B equals A over C. Perfectly fine. The exact same way you learned how to do it when you were in grade seven. So. What I would like us to do is I would like us to do this example. So I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to rewrite it. A equals B over C. And this time we're still going to solve for B. So I'm going to circle it. Well, currently we're dividing by C. So the opposite of dividing would be multiplying. So instead of dividing by C, I'm going to multiply. And whatever I do to one side of the equation, I also have to do to the other side of the equation. You're gonna notice now that we have a C on top and a C on bottom on the right-hand side, so they're gonna cross off. And I'm just gonna rewrite this. B, what I was trying to get by itself, equals, and I have these here, A times C. I wanna remind you that A times C or C times A, one times five, five times one, it means the same thing. So order of multiplying does not matter. So if I look at this, this is my equation for moving around this initial equation to solve for B. Now, let's pretend since learning this in grade seven, we've struggled with it. And there are a few people in the class who still hasn't been able to figure this out. So Mr. Van Willen and I, what we do is we have another way to do it. It's simpler. It's not very mathematical, but we like to call it the escalator method. And so in the escalator method, if you're solving for B, and again, you want to get B by itself, think of this all on one floor. When you go to move a variable across the equal sign, in the escalator method, when you move a variable across the equal sign to get what you're solving for by itself, it always is going to change floors. So if it is on the top floor and it crosses the equal sign, it's going to go into the basement. If it's in the basement and it crosses the equal sign, it's going to go upstairs. So because we want B by itself, when C leaves to cross the equal sign, because it's upstairs, it's going to go down into the basement. And so when it moves, it's going to be B equals A over C. This is no different than, hey, we're multiplying by C here. So we're going to divide both sides by C. If you go back two slides, you will see you, we got the exact same answer, except we are just moving floors. If you're upstairs, you're now going to go downstairs. If you're downstairs, you're now going to go upstairs. So let's try another example. We are going to solve for B. So I'm going to rewrite this thing. A equals B over C. I want B by itself. I'm happy with where it is. So I want to move C to the other side of the equal side. Well, again, when I cross the equal sign, it's going to change floors. So since it's in the basement, it's now going to go upstairs. So my formula is going to be B equals A times C. 
pretty straightforward. And since all the formulas we use in Chem 20 are multiplying and dividing formulas, this escalator method works every single time. This method will not work for adding and subtracting formulas, but we don't have any adding and subtracting formulas in this year in Chem 20. So down here, we're going to solve for B again. So I'm going to rewrite this. D equals E over B. And we're going to solve for B. Now, at first look, you might go, ooh, I'm going to move E down into the basement. But you're not, that's not leaving you B. You're not solving for B there. If you move E down, you're not solving for B. You're solving for 1 over B. And I want you to think about that. 2 does not equal 1 over 2. They don't equal each other. So if I move E down, you didn't actually solve for B. You solved for 1 over B, and that's not the purpose of this. We will never solve for something in the denominator. So to take something out of the denominator, that's the first thing we have to move. I need B upstairs. I need always the variable we're solving for upstairs. So the first thing I'm going to move is B is going to cross the equal sign, and I'm going to move it upstairs. So it's going to be written now as B times D equals E. Now, I still want to solve for B. So I still want B by itself. So my first step is move it to the other side. So it's now upstairs. Now, how do I get B by itself? D is going to change floors. So it's going to cross the equal sign and go downstairs. So my formula when I'm all done is going to be B equals E over D. That's pretty tricky. Let's walk through it again. I cannot solve for a variable in the denominator. So the first thing I have to do is move it across the equal sign upstairs. So it's now no longer in the denominator. I still want to solve for B by itself. So that means I have to move D. When I move D, it was upstairs. Now it's going downstairs. And that's how we get the formula where we have here. What I would like you to do is I have given you five examples to try. And in each of the five examples, the substance is green is the one that we are trying to solve for. So I'll do the first one with you. We are trying to solve for E. I want E by itself. Well, D, I've got to get rid of it. It's got to come over here. When it crosses the equal sign, D is going to go into to the denominator. So this is going to be F times G over D. Okay, let's try this example. We are solving for J. Again, I want J by itself. That means K's down here. When it crosses the equal sign, he's going to go from the basement upstairs. So J equals H times K over I. Again, if you wrote K times H, multiplying two numbers, three times two, two times three, order does not matter when multiplying. Okay, we're going to solve for N in this example. Well, to get N by itself, I want to move P to the other side, which means P is going to move upstairs. I also want to move O to the other side, which means O is going to move downstairs when it crosses the equal sign. So we're going to have N equals L times M times P divided by O. We're going to solve for S. Now, S is pretty tricky. Remember, S is in the denominator. We don't want it in the denominator. So S is going to come up first. So we're going to be left with R equals ST over UV. But we are still solving for S. So we want S by itself. Well, UV are both downstairs, so they're both going to move upstairs. T is upstairs, so it's going to move downstairs. S is going to equal R times U times V over T. And we have one left. We want to solve for X. To get X by itself, W is going to cross the equal sign, which means it's going to go from upstairs downstairs. 
x is going to equal 1 over w, y, z, all three variables in the denominator. I hope you found this easy. I hope you are remembering how to do this from previous years of math class. We're going to use this skill every single day in chemistry. Thank you very much.